In the Sahel during the 1970s, droughts led to land degradation and hardship. Some families despaired and migrated. Even when rain fell, it ran off the compacted surface, carrying nutrients with it. But here was an opportunity also. The abundant surface stones could be arranged in lines across the contour to slow down and spread that flow. A few farmers, in fact, had practiced this traditionally. Development agencies picked up the idea of improving and promoting this simple, cheap water harvesting system. One project in Burkina Faso used a model and a watering can to show farmers how the system worked. A contour stone line, some 25 to 30 centimeters in height, acts as a semi-permeable structure, slowing down runoff water and allowing the deposition of rich sediment behind the barrier. So less erosion, but more water for the crops. This makes it a very effective adaptation technology. Farmers were trained in laying out contours using a simple water tube level. and shown how to construct improved lines by digging a foundation trench along the contour, then placing larger stones first, followed by smaller ones. In situations where there is not enough stone, and to improve the effectiveness of the barrier, andropogon grass can be planted. Emphasis has been on encouraging villagers to work together, making rehabilitation of land a collective effort. Stone line construction was at a peak in the 1980s and 90s, but still continues as more degraded land is brought back into cultivation. The technique has spread from Burkina Faso to neighboring Mali and Niger, and further into the Sahel also. Exchange visits of farmers have helped to spread the message. This is a technology that is based on a tradition, with technical improvements that makes use of locally available resources. It is low cost, and requires skills that can be quickly learned. But that knowledge in itself is empowering. Stone lines are the foundation upon which other conservation and production elements are built. Planting pits, termed zai in Burkina Faso, or tassa in Niger, help hold water around the plants. And homemade compost, as shown here, or micro doses of fertilizer improve yields. Farmer-managed agroforestry systems complete the productive picture. The question now is, how have those first stone lines functioned over the years? And the answer is, extraordinarily well. The lines have not disappeared despite minimal maintenance, and their impact has endured. Returning to the scene of training and construction, the transformation in the landscape two decades later is clear for all to see. Barren land has been restored, vegetation has been re-established. Just a few meters away, the land on the other side of the road represents conditions before the stone lines were built. Farmers benefit directly and quickly, and these benefits have been sustained. In the 1990s, Bruno Kugwindiga was satisfied with the stone lines he had built. 
In the beginning, I could not make stone lines on all my fields, so I could clearly see the difference after sowing. Where there are stone lines, the sorghum harvest is noticeably better. But how has he fared after all these years? It has been more than 20 years that I started to make stone lines. I've really benefited a lot because it's increased my production in such a way that I have always enough to eat and I never have to struggle to make ends meet. Clearly, in Burkina Faso, local people's capacity to cope with drought and land degradation has been strengthened through simple technology and sustained support from outside. There is still much degraded land in the Sahel, but on Burkina Faso's central plateau, around a third of a million hectares has been reclaimed through farmers' conservation efforts with stone lines at the heart of the systems. The beauty is their simplicity. Arrange lines of loose stone across the slope and let the stones do the work. Farmers in the Sahel understand this, and perhaps nowhere in Africa has a conservation technology spread so fast. <laughs>